talk about how the circuit works. It's got a battery. The battery is connected to the antenna and when you put sh short the antenna together what you're doing is you're pulling um, the reset pin on your triple five timer which is this chip here, the not chip there, the a pin jobby, um, high. And this triple five timer is configured as a um, a stable multivibrator. So what it does is it produces a pulse train, which we're going to use as a clock to drive this um, octal D latch. Okay. So the triple five timer is in a stable mode. So when we pull the reset pin high, which is equivalent to um, touching the antennae together, it will start a clock essentially, a square wave on our on pin 3. And that is the uh, clock signal that is going to drive the um, these two chips, which is the, the latching um, octal D-latch uh, chip, as well as an, uh, a NOR gate, a collection of four NOR gates that is together forming what's known as a Linear Feedback Shift Register, LFSR, and we'll get into that in a minute. But. So, um, bits coming in here are going to get shifted down at each clock cycle, and then when this clock goes low, everything will stay in place, and so you will have a particular output of of bits that are represented as LEDs illuminated around the periphery of your butterfly, which is pretty darn nice, I think. And so one of the things that they've done is this um, bit stream is randomized through the, well, pseudo-randomized through the use of something that is called a linear feedback shift register. So this um, D these eight D latches are being used as a shift register, 
Like I said, each clock cycle moves whatever bit you've got down. But a linear feedback shift register uses um, XOR gates to um, feed back information about these, well, bits. So the input to these XOR gates in, a, in combination here, so these two feed into the top one, the output of the top one feeds into the next one, and then it combines those two and feeds into the top of this one and takes the input from here and combines this into here. This um, configuration will produce sequences of numbers or sequences of bit, bit patterns that are non-sequential. It's not exactly random, but it's non-sequential. So um, you get, um, if you introduce some sort of a, a salt or some sort of a, a randomness in your initial state, you will get a pseudo-random sequence. It's not truly random, it's predictable, but um, at any one bit, you're not going to know, knowing the state at one, without, let me, let me rephrase that. If you don't know the configuration of your XOR gates and which bits they're tapping from your input um, string, you won't be able to predict what the next um, element is going to be in the sequence. Obviously, if you know what your um, what your XOR gates are configured and tapping off of which of these, you can, you can completely predict what bit this is going to be. But if you're just looking at the stream of bits, there's nothing from the bit stream that's going to indicate what the next bit is going to be, unless you look at it for long enough. If it's going long enough, I mean, you can obviously reverse engineer it if you can, if you can um, configure the stream and you've got enough computing horsepower. But anyways, it's good enough for a, random, a pseudo random number generator and definitely for generating a pattern of, of um, LEDs on your, on your butterfly. Um, nobody's going to complain about the fact that it's not truly random. Or it's not, yeah, it's not truly random. It just needs to be, just needs to be random enough, right? And these thing, this thing's pretty cool. And there's a lot of interesting mathematics that goes into the theories behind it. Because one of the things that you can do is you can create a mapping from all of the different taps and number of different um, XOR gates into um, what's known as a, um, a, poly, a, a finite polynomial space. A finite field polynomial space. So all of the possible polynomials are represented um, using um, the uh, a finite field, uh, which, funnily enough, is 0 and 1. 0 and 1 turns out to be a finite field um, because it's closed under multiplication addition. Um, and if you suitably define multiplication addition modulo, um, modulo 2, then you've got a, all of the properties of a field are satisfied. Um, and then you can think of the inputs to these as um, uh, exponents on a polynomial. So the way you would represent this configuration is, so we've got eight bits, so we've got x to the eighth plus, and then we've got the seventh bit, x to the seventh plus x to the sixth plus x to the fourth plus one, which represents the input bit. So this polynomial is a, a formula that you can use to generate and exponentiation, obviously, over the field zero and one, because x can only be zero or one. And this polynomial will generate an input value here given these bits. So, um, some, you know, and so if you have different taps, you've got different polynomials. So, for example, if you wanted to, to tap um, x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared plus one, then you would tap the fourth, third, and second bit. Uh, so what is that? That's fourth, third, um, and second bit along there, and that would give you a different sequence of numbers that would a different bit sequence and that bit sequence would have a cycle so it would repeat itself over and over over again 
um, except the it would still have the property that um, if you were looking at um, one bit it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be counting a counting sequence of bits it would just be it would be a somewhat random sequence of bits it wouldn't look like they're counting but they would still go in a cycle and then using different polynomials i.e. different configurations of inputs into um, XOR registers will give you different um, two things. It'll give you different lengths of that cycle. And if you can find a polynomial that gives you the maximum number of different combinations, zero to of um, zero to eight, or zero to seven, one to eight, what you've found is a maximal length polynomial for your number of bits. Now it says here that this is a maximal length polynomial, and this polynomial is, uh, what did I say? x to the 8th plus x to the 7th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 4th plus 1. Now, I've been, I haven't gone through the math to try and figure out how you would prove that that's a maximal length polynomial, or if you um, would just have to, I mean, the easiest way to prove that would probably be writing a simple program and just running the... <clears throat> doing a numerical method on it. But the polynomials that I found online that um, that say their maximal length, that, that says its maximal length is, is x to the 8th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x to the 4th plus 1. Did I get that right? Yeah. 8654. So the taps should be there, there, and there, and there. So this tap should move up. Well, now, just because this is a maximal length polynomial doesn't mean that there aren't many of them. There could be, there could be a number of polynomials that would, would be maximal length. Um, in any event, that's what this circuit is doing, and that's how you create these things called um, linear feedback shift registers that produce sequences, pseudo-random sequences of numbers. Anyways, that's basically how this circuit works. It's pretty simple. You've got some feedback into these XORs that, um, as, this, as these cycle through, you will end up getting... Um, uh, 256 different patterns that are produced, as long as this is a maximal length polynomial. You'll have 256 patterns that get produced on the LEDs uh, as they're coming out, and it just depends on how much time you hold the um, antennae together, the, the, um, the pattern that you're going to get to. Now, if you wanted to do some tweaking, you could adjust the, um, what we got here, the RC values here, the voltage divider, um, so you can actually make this thing run slower. You can make this clock um, whatever period you want based on these values, but um, in terms of tweaking, if you wanted to do that, or you could um, jump her around with these various um, latches, or sorry, taps, and see if you get different collections of patterns coming out on your, um, on your butterfly. But uh, yeah. That's a very cool circuit. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Not only that, it's absolutely delightful to behold. Look at that thing. It is exquisite. Work of art. Well, except for my soldering and my crappy, uh, my crappy uh, uh, jumper wires. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was instructive. And thanks for watching. Talk to you later.